Good morning. It's Saturday, January the 7th, and it's time for another video. Um, New Year's here, and uh, we're going to encounter a lot of uh, interesting jobs in the months to come, whether they're litigation related from last year's situations, uh, new jobs coming up getting specified. So I want to talk to everybody today about stucco, hybrid stucco, exterior insulation finish systems, and exterior insulation finishes. These are not all stucco, they are not interchangeable terms like we tend to see as an industry problem. And I'm gonna kind of break them down a little bit for everybody to hope that you all understand what the differences are with these claddings. Limited visual aids today, so I'll do my best to make my way through them. So let's go back in time a little bit. Let's talk about stucco. So what is stucco? Stucco is a sand and cement based wall cladding. At an appropriate nominal thickness, it offers some really great water protection and it is going to be installed typically over an asphalt impregnated paper. So it's going to look something like this guy here in the picture. We're going to have some asphalt impregnated paper, some netting, some sand and cement stucco, and then we're going to come out to an overall stucco finish. So that's what stucco is. We don't see a lot of that anymore in today's industries. Um, pretty hard for stucco to meet energy codes for a lot of things when it's trying to be utilized. And that's where we're starting to see these shifts. So what's acrylic stucco? Well, acrylic stucco is the exact same thing as regular sand and cement stucco. The difference is, is you put an acrylic coating on the outside of it to get this, this, this newer look that people think is stucco. It's not. It's an acrylic coating. Hybrid stuccos or acrylic stuccos like we're just talking about, um, super detail oriented, 90% of the time installed poorly, water problems because they don't drain, water problems because they can't dry. There's a lot of reasons that these things go wrong. And it's a general lack of compliance and just the general detail. Um, it's gonna be one or two companies out there you're gonna see that actually have good drawings to put acrylic over top of sand and cement and make it functional. Um, most people that attempt it, it, it fails miserably. Um, last few homes I had seen this year that had acrylic coatings over traditional sand and cement, they were 12, 11, 10 years old, right around there and they were going into extensive exterior envelope rehab to the point where there's going to be rotten studs, there's going to be sheeting changes. Um, the systems don't work unless they are detailed very, very well. They need a designer involved. They have to show where casing beads are. They have to show the proper flashing installations. If these things aren't there, they're not gonna drain and they're not gonna work. So sand and cement stucco is stucco. Hybrid or acrylic stucco is sand and cement stucco with an acrylic coating on it. Okay, bottom line, that's what they are. Sand and cement, not a huge risk in installation as long as the nominal thickness is proper at about three quarters of an inch um, and detailed, of course, with appropriate drainage and detailing for today's modern homes. Acrylic stucco, ultra, ultra high risk because we are putting a acrylic coating, again, over top of a sand and cement system that may have drying and drainage issues the second it's done. Then we get into the one that is most commonly labeled as stucco and always makes me laugh when I see all these posts around the social media about how the guys are gonna go install the stucco and they're not installing stucco, they're attempting to install EFs or an exterior insulation finish system. An exterior insulation finish system, I've got this awesome, awesome wall board from ADEX, is, a, or sorry, a liquid applied membrane sand and cement ribbons for drainage for this particular system, insulation board with geometric groove drainage, fiberglass reinforcing mesh, sand and cement embedding it, acrylic coating, making the lambda. So this is an exterior insulation finish. So the odds are if your home has this coating on it and this is what you're seeing, you're more likely to be an exterior insulation finish or a poor attempt at one than you are going to be a true sand and cement system like we see here. So what's the difference? If I can get this coating here over top sand and cement, and I can get this coating here over top of this, well, which, which one's for me? Well, when we come to modern times, we need to insulate our homes better. We need to improve the building envelope. We want to reduce our energy costs. Things are getting tighter. Things are getting better. So the advantage to an exterior insulation finish system is to put the insulation outboard to overall enhance the building envelope and hopefully reduce our operating costs. This can become a very technical conversation over how many windows are in a wall, how few windows are in a wall, what insulation board thickness is proper to achieve the overall goal. We're not gonna dive into that today. Again, we're just talking about what the systems are. So let's recap. Sand and cement stucco. It's all sand, it's all cement. 
right side. It's all sand, it's all cement, typically over an asphalt impregnated paper, uh, stucco netting, cement finish coats. Takes a month at least to get this done. You gotta let things cure properly. Then we have acrylic or hybrid stuccos. Wrong, wrong information. Lots of real estate listings. Be careful guys, get your labeling right. You don't end up in litigation. Sand and cement stucco with an acrylic coating would be called a hybrid stucco or acrylic stucco. Then we get into an exterior insulation finish system. So the key word we have to take away from this one, another word number three, is system. If we want to be truly cold compliant, in most cases, we need our membrane, we need our cement, we need our insulation, we need our reinforcing mesh, we need our cement again, and we need our finished coats all from a single source manufacturer that has tested and, or tested and done their diligence for CCMC evaluations or Canadian Construction Material Evaluations. The reason why is this stuff here that's made of EPS for the insulation, it's combustible. And if it's not done right and you have a fire, it can flow like lava down a wall if it hits a flash point. Um, the biggest failure, and this is a back wrap starter. This is, this is a fire safety feature. This one's from ADEX, it's really great. Um, the biggest failure we see is roof lines at the soffits. All the guys running around saying to be the best, they don't ever insulate, the, or sorry, back wrap the roof line. So they don't have a fire compliant wall. Um, you can get some funny arguments about that one from the most experienced guys and the best guys, and uh, they still don't have a compliant wall and they'll refuse to fix it. And you just send them off to home warranties, you get the engineers involved, maybe get a claim approved, maybe not, tear it off yourself, spend the money to have the house fixed, you'll probably get paid back. Then we have an exterior insulation finish. So we don't have an exterior insulation finish system anymore, we have a finish. Well, what's that? And that's what we were seeing years ago. That's what we were seeing applied to a lot of the homes in the Windermere area, pretty much throughout all of Western Canada for that matter, where we were applying this insulation board over top of regular sheeting membranes and things like this, and it is not what we call EFS. It does not have all of the components from a single source manufacturer. We were basically just a mishmash of components, and we have in turn made a wall cladding, um, you see a lot of litigation for it. You see people trying to pigeonhole it into other areas of building code. Um, you see people try to call it penalized installations. Like some of the stuff you see is just so hilarious uh, when you get these reports that uh, it, it makes you wonder sometimes if people have ever read, read anything relevant to building code, um, have ever taken a building science course, um, or even understand what they're putting on paper at days. And, and I've made those mistakes too. Let's face it, we're all human, but when you get to a professional level, those mistakes shouldn't be happening. Um, so again, when we talk about an EF, exterior insulation finish, it just means that we don't have all these components from a single source. It's probably not code compliant to today's standards. There is ways to work around that as well. Uh, we've been in situations where, you know, like again, going back to the ADEX side of things here, um, all of a sudden you go to a job, but things aren't going well. You've got your first layer of membrane from somebody else on that wall and a, a stop's gonna go to that job and it's gonna be changed out to a different manufacturer to better suit the application. And yes, we have seen situations where not every single component is gonna come from a single source manufacturer and it still will be code compliant. It will still function as it's intended to. The, the challenge is, is that the conversations need to first happen at a manufacturer's level and make sure with them that, hey, if we do this and this and switch over to your product, uh, are we gonna have a compliant warranty? Do we need you out here to inspect before we go? Can we have a third party come in and inspect? So there's lots and lots and lots of different ways to talk about it. So again, we have stucco, which is sand and cement. That's all that's in there. We have acrylic stucco or hybrid stucco, which is the same thing, but again, gets an acrylic coating and that's what hybrid stucco is. Then we get into exterior insulation finishes, it means finish systems, sorry. This means it all comes from a single source manufacturer. And then we have what we call an EF or an exterior insulation finish can't call it a system because um, it's not going to come from a single source. So why do we talk about these things? Why is there so many problems about them? Well, at the end of the day, we don't tend to see a huge amount of problems with older traditional sand and cement stucco. Building design was very, very different. When we apply, again, the acrylic coating over top sand and cement, uh, we can cause a lot of drainage problems. We can cause moisture issues because it can't dry. There's a lot of complications that come with it. Um, there's drainage mats. There's so many different things we can use to detail the wall perfectly and make it very functional. It just doesn't meet the pocketbook for many people. Again, then we get into our exterior insulation finish systems, which is now in code finally. It can finally be argued one way or the other that there's a right way and a wrong way to do things because of the code verbiage, which is great. 
And again, an installation finish is not a system. It's not code compliant. It probably never was code compliant because it probably never had a fire rating. Um, there, there's ways that these conversations happen in the warranty world. So a couple questions I want to touch on that I always get about particularly exterior insulation finishes is again, why are they failing? What isn't working? What's done wrong? What are some things that we can watch for? Well, at the end of the day, I always tell everybody when you're interviewing contractors or applicators for a job, um, go look at the job sites, you know, check out their social medias, take a look at what they have to say, watch out for the guys that are running around saying they're the best, uh, nobody knows what they're doing, we're the only guys that know what we're doing, those are typically your red flags that you don't have somebody good. Um, I would suggest if you've decided for your project that you're going to use Stowe, or if you're going to use ADEX, or you're going to use Drive It, or Durabond, or whoever it may be, that you reach out to the manufacturer's rep, have a conversation with them about what your project is, and that you're looking for a manufacturer's list of recommended applicators. Uh, they're out there, and these are the guys that are going to have a conversation or an arms, like, arms reach to a, to a manufacturer for technical support. They've probably had them on sites, so they know their experience, uh, because it is a very transient workforce. So here today, gone tomorrow, numbered companies uh, freak people out, as they should. Um, one thing that comes up in a lot of the conversations is, well, using ADAX today, can I use this as my single source membrane on the outside of my house? Lots of guys will call this the air barrier, the air barrier, the air barrier. Yes, it will serve as an air barrier, but it's ultimately your weather resistive barrier. This is your moisture protection to the substrate. It's a lot more than just an air barrier. And when it's not implied properly, and it's not detailed properly around penetrations, which it rarely is, um, it's not much of an air barrier at all. So how we use it matters, and that's everything about it. Can we use it as a single source membrane on the entire home or building? Yes, you can. Um, for some of the manufacturers, they can be pierced with nails, they're self-sealing, that's fine. The problem that comes into play is, let's say we're putting some netting on, we're putting some stone on, we're putting a strata panel, who knows what it is, and we puncture through it, and then we decide to take that nail out because we have to move it, and we put it over here and go keep going, well, now we've failed because that nail hole needed to be filled because now we've got a hole in the wall. Um, so do I recommend a single source membrane for every application? Absolutely not. Um, I don't think it's good. I think we need to have better drawings. I think we need to have better transitions between this and high spun house wraps or building paper, whatever the case may be. But no, I don't believe that this is a good suited product uh, when we start transitioning from one cladding to the next. Because again, we, we don't know and we can't prove that a hole that happens or gets punctured through the membrane will ever be sealed. When it does become very advantageous to use a single source membrane is when you start doing some things like Stowe's Faux Wood. Beautiful products from the street. You are not going to know the difference that this is not real wood um, or real stone and brick and all these other things that Stowe offers. But where this becomes super, super awesome is you take the steps into spending all this money to enhance your home. Again, this is a focus on EFs. Um, we can put this insulation board on the outside of the house. We can put, in turn, this faux wood on here. Then you can transition to stucco on the next wall, or in this case, eaves. Sorry, I'm now mixing up my own terms. And you can put eaves right beside it, and you have continuous insulation um, out through the entire envelope. So th there's certainly some advantages to doing things differently, but we have to think outside the box. I'm sorry, the conversations on the construction sites aren't happening. They're not happening in the sense of not saying like, hey, why are you not giving me the opportunity as the EFS applicator to bid on your stone in your, your cedar? Uh, we can actually do this in an exterior insulation finish, put our, put our simulated woods on the outside, stain them any color in the world you want, and you'll actually have an enhanced building envelope way more than what you have today. So your options are out there. The conversations aren't happening at, at the contractor level. We're encouraging many contractors to reach out to the manufacturers. We're encouraging our builders that we work with to reach out to the manufacturers and have these conversations because there's so many great products out there. You can really enhance with EFs. Another challenge with EFs is bird strikes. So birds love this stuff. It is sounding like a hollow rotten tree. You're gonna get them a nice home. So you'll see woodpecker damage a lot of times on these. Um, there is workarounds, there is solutions, and there is things that can be done to repair them. Um, some systems just do multiple layers of different weights of mesh, and that makes it very, very hard. Um, you've got the 8X graphic coat. There's many different ways that bird systems can be achieved at a manufacturer's level, but what people tend to forget is that we have to go around the house many, many times to do these sort of things. And if we think about all these different coatings that are on a home, you know, putting on the mesh, putting the insulate, putting the membrane on. That's one lap around the house. 
putting the cement tissue adhesive on. That's going to be another lap around the house as we're installing the insulation board. Then when we install our fiberglass reinforcing mesh, we've got to go around the house again. Now, if we want to install another layer of mesh for somebody's system that that's how they mitigate birds, then we go around again. Or we use ADEX, we use a graphics coat, we go around again. And then we put our coatings on, we're around again. So the more laps we take around the house, so to speak, the greater it's gonna cost, but that's how you're gonna mitigate the damages of your home in the future, is by paying for it up front. Uh, recent conversation, infill a friend of mine's building, his house, um, to do the bird coatings, I'm so sorry, but it was around $10,000 extra for his home. Because it was that, his home is very, very complex. And it was gonna be about a $10,000 hit. And he's like, you know what? If I don't do it today while I'm building the home, I'm going to do it in three years because I'm in the river valley and I know that I'm gonna get bird hits. I'm seeing it on my neighbor's homes. They're patching bands, floating walls, taping lines. Like He's like, you can tell by looking at these homes, they've been all patched up. I don't want that. Where you do need to be careful is there is some companies out there that offer bird systems that will come into your Eve's home that has this stuff on it, exterior insulation finish with acrylic. All the holes are around your house. They'll install a diamond lay, start putting cement on top of it, start turning it into a, a really hard system. Um, I've seen them, more of them fail than that actually succeed. So you need to be really cautious out there. Uh, again, I'm very passionate about EFs. I think it is an outstanding wall cladding. I think it's value proposition makes sense. I think we can do a lot of things with it. It just needs to be used properly. We need to select the proper insulation thickness for our wall. We need to know where we put a four inch on versus a two inch on. Um, if we're not doing it right, we're not, we're not gaining anything. Aesthetically, it's gorgeous. Again, we can do continuous insulation behind wood, stone, and other simulated products to have a truly enhanced building envelope. But the question becomes, who's the right one for the job? Again, when it comes down to the four systems that are out there, commonly confused, we've got stucco, acrylic stucco, EFs, and an EF, go to a manufacturer. If there's no manufacturer, you're probably getting something that's site developed or something that somebody's been doing for a long time that maybe works for now, but you're not gonna have the data on how it's gonna perform. Is it safe? Does it have a fire rating? Exterior insulation finishes, installed before 2020, probably don't have a fire rating. They're probably not compliant. Nobody's gonna help you but yourself to fix your home for safety purposes. So if you wanna talk a little bit more about EVES, drop us an email, send us a call. If you're having problems with your home with moisture issues or whatever the case may be, we're here to help. We wanna get more topics from you and uh, let's make sure we hit on them as they come up. Have a great weekend.